Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate everyone tuning in today. I'm going to discuss ghillie suits and um, kind of how they fit in with crap hits the fan and that sort of thing and prepping. Um, I think ghillie suits have their place. Um, a lot of people associate ghillie suits with snipers, and that's obviously a given. However, I think they have other useful um, things that can be done with them because even law enforcement uses these not in a sniper role but in an observation role. A lot of times, uh, especially rural uh, agencies, sheriff's office, uh, they'll use uh, this type of method of camouflaging themselves to go out and gain intelligence and or build cases against people that are, you know, building meth labs, marijuana growers, um, illegal moonshine steals, things like that, and they'll need to go out and build a case, and they'll need to go out and do surveillance and observation to find out when they're coming and going, things like that, what the operation looks like, if there's any booby traps, what have you. So, in a crap hits the fan situation, uh, you can, and you know, we use camouflage in even hunting scenarios. There's ghillie suits, if you will, quote unquote ghillie suits, that are designed for hunting. They have like a leaf pattern or whatever, and then some of the major uh, manufacturers in hunting uh, make those type of suits, and for turkey hunters and deer hunters and things like that. So, they serve a lot of different purposes, and the main thing is for camouflage. Now, a ghillie suit is just to help you um, in camouflaging. It is because you have to use, understand terrain and how to, uh, you know, utilize the terrain to hide yourself and things like that. And I'll give you this example. If, a, if I'm wearing a ghillie suit and I'm standing up in the middle of a field, guess what? I look like a guy standing in the middle of a field with a ghillie suit on, right? So it's not going to make you disappear, but it does help you if I'm laying down in behind some other things within that field or in a little low spot and, and so forth, and I've used the correct vegetation to add to my ghillie suit in that field, now I'm very hard to see, right? So um, that's the purpose of a ghillie suit is just to help you with your camouflage, uh, but you also have to understand concealment and things like that. So keep that in mind. I don't like the commercial suits. They, um, they're just really not designed correctly they you know they're fine for maybe paintball or airsoft or something nothing wrong with that if you don't want to go through that trouble of making one and they're really not that hard to make and I'm going to talk about that today a little bit and I don't you know you can have a ghillie suit and a lot of people think that that means you know pants top hat you know veil something like that and you're covered from head to toe and that's okay you can do that I prefer just a top a veil and some camouflage pants of some sort. Uh, I typically go with the standard old school woodland camo, just kind of what I grew up with and used to. Not saying the digitals won't work, they obviously will. So that's going to be your personal preference. You could just take some plain old, you know, a plain old jacket and do the same thing I'm talking about here and just paint it correctly um, with some camouflage paint or something. Um, but the uh, these things, these blouses can be bought on the surplus market pretty cheap. No big deal, and you can put this thing together. And what I'm going to do is not really a how-to um, per se, because I'm not going to construct this on camera, but I'm just going to show you. Once I explain it, you should be able to understand it pretty easy. It's not that difficult. So some materials. I'm going to go over the material list, what you're going to need, and all that, and kind of go over it step-by-step step how I do it. So you're going to need some type of top. Uh, to put it on. I personally, some people even use um, like a flight suit, a one-piece mechanics type or a flight suit. I don't like those. They're too hot, too bulky. Not going to, and I like being able to just throw the top on and go, uh, take the top off, wad it up, put it in a bag, and not have to strip down off all that stuff, even if I'm wearing it over my clothes. So I prefer something like this. And what you're going to do is get you a base, which is some type of blouse. Uh, like Again, I prefer the BDU style um blouse that is the woodland camo you're going to need that and you're going to need some other things i'm going to go over that with you how i built mine um you're going to need a few different types of netting this right here this netting here it's kind of hard to pick up in the camera but this right here was a laundry bag and if you can't find black that's fine you can get white and then just paint it um, so you'll need something like this 
You're going to need screen material, which is the same thing that's on your home. Do not buy metal screen material. Buy the um, um, synthetic, that's like a vinyl type, plastic type uh, screen material. You're going to need some type of heavy duty material like this. I bought this at Walmart by the yard. It is obviously a green color on the front with a canvas type thick material. On the back side here is a waterproof, uh, plasticky, rubbery kind of uh, coating. Okay. I like this when I found it because it serves a couple different purposes. It's heavy duty and also where I'm utilizing it, it will actually be waterproof, which is nice. Okay. So you got that. You're going to need some jute material and you can use different things. You can use actual burlap. Um, and I will say this about ghillie suits. There's many ways to correctly build one. Um, there uh, definitely are ways to not build it correctly. Again, the, the commercial made ones that kind of look like a Wookiee or a Chewbacca, that's not the type you want. And there's a lot of reasons why. And I'll kind of go over that as I do the video. I just simply went to the Dollar Tree um, and got some of these uh, rolls of jute material or jute twine. Uh, you can use baling twine, uh, which is found in most uh, hardware stores, feed stores, stuff like that. Um, garden centers have this because people use this in their gardens to type tomato steaks, things like that. And it usually comes in natural colors, either a natural tan burlap, some of these green colors, what have you. Okay. Then you're going to need another type of netting, which is a little bit bigger in the diameter of the square this right here it would work really well i've got this this right here if you um, look on ebay this is usually under decorative fishing net and it's fairly cheap because these are old fishing nets that they um, cut up and sell for decorative purposes people using a nautical type theme and this right here is actually a tannish green color already which is a nice feature um, but something like this or if you can't do that, uh, or you just want to get something local, you can simply go to your local Walmart and find one of these cheap um, nets that is used for like badminton. Okay, so break down the list. You're going to need a larger diameter squared netting. You're going to use a smaller netting. You're going to use screen, some type of heavy duty fabric. The jute material and then the only there's no sewing involved or anything the only thing you're going to use to hold this whole thing together this whole project is you're going to need probably on the safe side i would probably buy at least three to four tubes of shoe goo uh, i've done a couple videos uh, about uh, prepping and, and things you can keep in your preps uh, one of the things i talked about is shoe goo this right here is excellent for repairs obviously it is designed for shoes but it also does other things too just like build this ghillie suit it um, it's kind of a silicone type uh, glue type stuff that once dries it's waterproof and it's very durable okay so the first thing you're going to do with your suit is you're going to let me uh, get set up here guys let me turn this around you're going to If you look, you're going to cut a hole, a square hole, in the back of your suit. The only purpose for the hole is for ventilation. These things get hot, okay? So this helps that breathe. So what you're going to do is cut your hole. Then you're going to take two-inch strips. And what I did was, utilizing that canvas-type material I bought, I cut two-inch strips about that wide the same width that goes along here all right so what you're going to do first is you're going to take the smaller mesh material that I showed you which is the um, black um, can, um, clothes bag laundry bag and you're going to glue it in place cut it out the same size as your hole a little bit bigger obviously and then glue it in place and let it dry with the shoe goo then you're going to take these strips and you're going to glue that down. 
in place let that set up and dry it's this is a long process because this glue even though it's very uh, durable it does take a little while to set up so you're probably looking at a 15 to 30 minute process in between uh, each stage of this to make it workable because if not it'll pull apart on you then once you do that you're gonna cut the screen material out the same size of you know the, the as far as uh, just a just a little bit bigger than your square glue it in place and now that you've got that foundation you can do this in two steps you can put this in or in one step you can glue this uh, in and then take more strips another set of strips and glue them on top of that so you're sandwiching everything together to make a nice platform the reason I use the laundry bag mesh and the screen material if you wanted to use only the screen material that's fine the reason I use both is because one kind of protects the other so this with this setup the the outside is a little tougher i think than the screen so twigs and stuff pushing through won't push it'll kind of protect your screen material the screen material needs to stay in um good condition because what it's going to do is keep bugs from coming in so that'll help keep down some of that uh, with the screen material so now you have a nice ventilation hole for this thing then you're going to take that same canvas type material and you're going to lay it out on your top of your blouse on each side like this and you're going to cut it out then you're going to glue it in place with that shoe goo now when you glue it you're going to don't just take and run a whole uh, sheet of that stuff that glue on there it gets real stiff so just kind of put dots all around and then around your edging here Kind of go back and work that a little extra so the whole edge is sealed so it don't peel up on you all right so one other thing i forgot to mention when i was talking about the product list is you don't have to have this i prefer it is i went and got heavy duty velcro which you can see here and if you notice i use shoe goo and i glued it but i left the buttons exposed so now i can utilize both I can use the Velcro for easy on and off, and then if I needed to, it, I can actually button it if I so choose. You could actually just take the buttons off if you wanted to and not even worry about them, but because they were in place, I just simply worked around them and left them in place. makes it easier for me uh, to do it that way. And then I can use the Velcro to take it on and off very easily and quickly. All right. Also, you're going to come in here in the sleeve area where your elbow and uh, forearm would be because this is where you're going to low crawl this is where you're going to dig in the ground and start crawling you could actually go up even higher than i did with this up into this area but i just did it kind of here where my elbows and, and part of my uh, um, lower arm is and you're going to glue that in place with the shoe goo then i take 550 cord and I put these loops in you just tie a little uh, overhand knot on one end of it and run it through the eyelet here uh, the buttonhole eyelet and what this is for is when you're low crawling along you can run this in your thumb like that and it will keep your sleeve from riding up on your arm so this right here helps you keep that sleeve nice and down uh, around your uh, hand instead of riding up on your arm and getting bunched up. So just some simple things. And when you get done, you can just take your thumb out like that and you just have that uh, loose like that. But you can, when you're crawling, you can actually slip your thumb in there to keep it from doing that. All right, on the back side, this is where the magic happens, as they say. What you're going to do is take that netting. Um, either the uh, fishing netting or the other netting that is the volleyball type goal uh, or badminton type goal uh, netting and you're going to lay it out and trim it to size and you want it a little long uh, you don't have to have it super long in the back but a little bit long where it kind of goes past your uh, bottom and these because they're BDUs they're typically longer anyway so they'll be past your rear end normally a little bit at least about halfway down and then you're going to glue it in place with the shoe goo what you're going to do is glue a little bit at a time because this stuff will pull as you're working it, it, it the other sections trying to glue it the other pieces will pull off so you might have to glue a little at the top at the uh, at the top of it first let it set up 
and then start working your way down gluing it in place and then around all the edges like I said, it takes 15 to 30 minutes for each uh, set of glue you put in to set up. So if you glue the top, it's going to plan on waiting 15 to 30 minutes. So this is kind of a, you know, about an all-day process. And it can take you a couple days. Depends on how hard you work at it. Then you're going to get your, uh, once that sets up really good and dries really nice, then you're going to start being able to add your jute twine. I just start randomly cutting strips out. Um, you know, usually about at least... 12 inches or so long uh, about a foot long because what you're going to do when you trim it and cut it you're actually going to double it over and let me see if i can give you uh, let me see if i can find my scissors guys and i'll show you how i did that all right i can't find my scissors they must be camouflaged down here i can't see them so i'll uh, use something else here and uh, get you uh, an idea of what this is going to look like. <laughs> All right, so you're going to take your piece of twine and you're going to double it over just like that. And now you have what looks like this. And then I'm going to show you, you're going to find a piece of this netting material right here, and I just go underneath like that pull it up pull the string the double end back through and simply do like that and now it will not come undone at all all right so one more piece that i added again this is not necessary but one more piece that i'm going to tell you about and what i did was i ordered pipe cleaners and these are green you fi I found them on ebay and this allows you to tie in vegetation easier um, you can tie it in and undo it and just keep them on here. They're green anyway. And then you can go and take spray paint and paint everything down because this glue is shiny when it dries. So I highly recommend taking a flat, uh, flat paints and earth tones and start spraying all that down. And obviously this green here, if I left the front of it, this kind of odd looking green, there's not a lot in nature of that color green, but at least it's not bright yellow, right? So I at least started with something in a green earth tone. Then I went in, if you look on the front here, I went in and sprayed down everything and muted it and kind of gave it, uh, you know, with some stripes and some dots and things like that with the spray pattern. And you can kind of play with this if you wanted to block out and, and do it in, in blotches heavier than I did, you can. Um, a ghillie suit is a work in process, uh, in progress. And you're also going to change the ghillie suit based on your environment where you're at so if it, and also the uh, time of year and things like that so if it's um you know fall you're going to use you know a lot of dead foliage if it's you know spring and summer you're going to use a lot of more natural uh live foliage that's more greens and things like that so you're kind of going to mix it up if you're in a field of broom straw you're going to obviously use broom straw you're not going to use other things that's going to stand out to Normally a trained observer, a um, trained observer will probably spot you. Somebody that's a, you know, not a trained observer, somebody's highly skilled in looking at things uh, that's in, uh, say, a, a really uh, uh, experienced hunter, people, outdoors people, they may see that and go, what is that out there? That's not right. Because they're, but the average person, the city dweller, we call them, they probably, I mean, hell, they're usually clueless about most anything if it ain't just standing right in their face because a lot of times their phone's, you know, stuck to their face and they're not even paying attention to the, what's going on around them. Um, anything can happen. But, you know, if in a crap it's fan situation, everybody's awareness and, and height of awareness is going to be a lot stronger anyway, whether you're a city dweller or not. But to a trained eye, they might could find you. Usually, probably 90% of the population, 95% of the population long as you're halfway you know doing what you're needing to do with camouflage correctly and utilizing concealment and things like that they're not going to see you so you know ghillie suits are kind of cool if you will kind of tactical and all that good stuff i just think they have a good purpose you know when crap hits the fan and you may need to go out and do some hunting to uh, feed your family it uh, may be a situation where you're going to have to you know sneak up on some game and be a little uh, stealthy and this is a way to do that if you um, need to gather some intelligence on something going on 
you know, seeing what's going on, or if you just need to not be seen, you need to get out of an area that's a bad area, and um, you're, uh, you need to kind of blend in, well, obviously a ghillie suit in a wooded environment is going to help you accomplish that. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about that. One other thing I would suggest you make, and I won't go over that, the, same, the process is basically the same. Um, I made this. This right here is a uh, veil, if you will. Um, and if you notice, it's a lot longer in, in the back, in one end of it here. And the reason I did that, um, I simply put this on an old school uh, Marine Corps, uh, uh, not a boonie hat, but a uh, cover, Marine Corps cover, um, BDU cover. And then um, I added this string to it like a boonie hat has. I don't like boonie hats because I like being able to utilize the brim to be able to push this up away from my neck or if I've got it turned in the in facing me uh, where this is wearing it uh, normal uh, it keeps it away from my eyes because this stuff can kind of poke you and things like that so I can turn it around if I need to to be able to observe easier and if you notice the front is very short you don't want that really long because you're going to camouflage your face if you know what you're doing or at least wear some type of camouflage netting over your face maybe a tur turkey hunters type uh, face uh, shield that's camouflaged something like that in conjunction with something like this you can also take some of that netting and you can make yourself a um, a piece for your rifle to uh, put on it if you like and uh, I've got one of those also that I use and it works really well you can uh, again I use these ties here to tie it to my rifle untie it and throw it in my pack so it works really well so between the ghillie top and some type of hat some type of head cover that's what you're looking for and then obviously learning how to camouflage your face utilizing camouflage techniques with paint uh, some get some good camouflage paint that doesn't really rub off really easy I kind of like the old-school stick style that the military uses used to use a long time ago because it's really hard to get off once you get it on uh, but it's it's not near as easy as the stuff they've got now that uh, is a lot softer that stuff's pretty hard but i will tell you a little trick uh, we used to uh, heat it with a zippo lighter and just get it a little uh, softer and it's easier to go on but uh, you can use the stick and then you can put some on your finger and get it on your face and things like that uh, but anyway learn about camouflage and concealment guys um, you've got camouflage concealment and cover uh, learn the differences cover is actually going to help you possibly stop something coming at you like a bullet or shrapnel or something cover and concealment is basically people you're trying to keep people from seeing you Cover can also be, can, you know, camouflage because you're behind something they can't see you. But um, learn those uh, little tricks. There's a lot of good manuals out um, that's declassified. It's old Marine Corps stuff, uh, Army stuff, things like that. Field manuals that talk about camouflage and how to do things. And it's all over the internet. I highly suggest you understand some of that. It'll help your hunting if you're a hunter or just a kind of a novice hunter, hunter learning. Teach you some of those things, especially turkey hunters. Turkey Turkeys are very keen on being able to see things and stuff like that. So they have to be really, really, a, hunter, a turkey hunter has to be really, really camouflaged. And this right here, if you can really sneak up and, and get in place and position and have turkeys come in and things like that and not be seen, you're doing pretty good. So anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Video's a little longer than I wanted, but uh, had a lot to discuss about this. If you've got any experience with something like this, uh, please share that below. Uh, talk about it. Again, I tell you, there's... Um there's quite a few wrong ways to do it, uh, but there's also quite a few right ways. Kind of make the suit your own, but it has to make sense. Uh, again, I added these thumb pieces here. A lot of people may not even have that on theirs. I made it my own. So kind of make it fit you and what you want. Um, also, on your tops, when you order them, order them a little big because normally I like putting this over something. Uh, it's like a jacket almost. So I'll put it over, even if it's just a uh, something like an Under Armour t-shirt, uh, one of the wicking type t-shirts. Um, but make sure you order it a little big so you have plenty of room because when you start crawling in things you need room uh, to maneuver in those positions and order it a little big when you order. So anyway guys, I appreciate you tuning in. As always, like, share, and subscribe. We'll be bringing another video shortly. Have a great day guys.